thank you for joining us at Libertarian Counterpoint. With me is Leon Brathwaite from the Knuckleheads of Liberty podcast and our usual co-host here, John Cameron. Thank you guys for joining us. We uh, greatly appreciate it. And one of the things we don't appreciate is the FBI continually searching millions of Americans, you know, without warrants and without reason. Now, my question is, if the, if the FBI thinks two, three million Americans are potential terrorists, maybe they need to redefine what a terrorist is. If they're searching this many people, if they're searching this many, aren't they just dragging too wide of a net and it's just becoming pointless, essentially, maybe just justification of their jobs? Well, well the, there is, the, to me, there is a bigger problem here with the FBI, and I think you're absolutely right. They need to really redefine what a terrorist is, but the FBI, the hands of the FBI are turning up dirty in too many places. They were involved with the, with the Russiagate thing. They were involved with the spying on the Trump campaign. I mean, I know some liberty-minded people had some problems with Donald Trump, but he's a, an American citizen, and he deserves all the rights as granted in the US Constitution. But the FBI is turning up all over the place. The, um, the Gretchen, uh, the governor of Michigan, they were sup they supposed kidnapping, and they turned out that the FBI had a bunch of people involved with that in, in that whole scenario. So the FBI, the hands of the FBI is turning up in too many places. And this issue about the, about the warrantless searches that we are just hearing about, I mean, it's, it's quite alarming. These are our, our rights, our liberties that are, that are at stake here. And we gotta be careful with these people because this is law enforcement. These are the people who are supposed to be quote unquote protecting us and they're going after us. We got a problem here. Mm. Well, and, and I absolutely agree with Leon. Mr. Braithwaite, I agree with you. You could call me Leon, it's all right. Uh, don't, don't make me old. <laughs> all right. Well, Leon, uh, I agree, but they, basically they're saying, um, well, the, the, the people that did this research uh, are saying that they, this was not uh, a terrorist sweep, this was a criminal sweep, and which makes it even worse, yes. I mean, if it can be worse, because... Uh, well, not that terrorism is an issue, um, you know, I mean, well, it is, but um, they're, they're so bad at their jobs that, um, you know, the chances of them actually catching somebody, you know, doing something they really wanted to are pretty slim. But the fact that they're making these warrantless searches in, in supposedly in search of criminal behavior makes it worse because we have, you know, we've, the American people chose to, you know, give up. I don't know, the passively, I guess, give up a lot of their rights because of the threats of terrorism. And yes. we have this, you know, homeland security that employs who, how many ever people and pretty soon is going to be in charge of truth, yes. which is pretty freaking scary. Um, but, you know, the fact that, that they're, they're using these sweeps to look for criminal activity, which is, you know, criminal activity, protection against uh, overreach, by government authority and criminal behaviors is one of the founding principles of the Constitution. You know, you, you in this country, unlike France, um, you, are, um, you are innocent until proven guilty. And, and any law enforcement agency, and that includes the, the FBI, is supposed to have um, um, knowledge that leads them to believe that you are guilty of some criminal behavior and then by law they are required for criminal behavior not for because of the stupidity of us giving up our rights because of the terrorism stuff but for criminal behavior they're required to, to get a warrant uh, to look for uh, additional information to help them prove a criminal case after they already have pretty strong evidence that you're guilty of criminal behavior so that the judge will sign off on it. And yes. this is three million plus, and if we know about three million plus, it's probably 10 times that many. Absolutely. So uh, it's, it's crazy bad, and the FBI um, an initially started out with the completely false reputation of being uh, untouchable, you know, and, and above, above the fray politically, and they've proven themselves to be, as you so eloquently put it, a part of the political fray and, and on one side, on, on, yes. on, on the, the anti-Trump side. Yes. Um, and um, so I'm, I'm pretty upset about it, and I think the American people are, are pretty upset about it too. 
And, oh. they, and they should be. And they yeah. should be. I mean, and if, if I may add, James, yeah. I, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut no, you off or anything. And they should be upset. I mean, if you remember just recently, the, um, the teachers, the, the National School Board Association wrote a letter to the White House. Supposedly, the letter was actually solicited by the, the Secretary of, of Education. They wrote a letter to, 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 to the White House. And within four days, James Garland, who's the, uh, our attorney general, had the FBI out there looking at looking at looking into the background of parents just because they went to school board meetings and stood up for their children. Mm. I mean, this is scary stuff. Yes, the FBI looking out for parents who are not even protesting, just attending school board meetings. Exactly. And to get a little animated at a school board meeting, which is hardly anything new in American mm. politics, but now all of a sudden they're going to get investigated by the FBI for for potential terrorism issues mm. or potential well, theoretical violence that may occur some point down the range if you know it's it's getting very bizarre and we know we've covered here on the on this on the show in the past about how the fbi has had issues with their labs yeah. the fbi labs have had long times of issues of of oh falsifying mm. Records, right. falsifying data. Right. To, to pursue. Shocked. I'm just shocked. Just shocked. <laughs> and these are the people. If, I'm but aghast. We, we can't trust the people who are, you know, these, they claim it's a country made of laws and we're all supposed to follow the laws. But the whole point, the difference between America was that the government was supposed to be held accountable to its own laws as much as the citizens were. Yes. It was, and that is clearly no longer the case, if it ever really was. Mm. But it's now so obvious that it's not. Mm. And the question is, you know, what do we as Citizens, what are we going to do about that? Well, the rule of law, the rule of law was supposed to rule supreme in the United States with the Constitution being the supreme law of the land. And if now that is being violated, if that is now being ruptured, we got a big problem. Mm. We really do. Mm. And, that, and, and the Constitution of the United States, a lot of people make very light of it. I've heard jokes saying, oh, if the founding... If the founders, because we can't say founding fathers, so the founders were around now, they'd, they'd say, are you still using that old thing? I heard somebody say that. And I thought, you son of a, well, I'm like, I can't say it on the air. <laughs> um, you know, if you think about it, it, it's really a magnificent thing. This, this country and the principles and the freedoms and the wonderful ideals it was founded on were created out of whole cloth on three large sheets of paper. And it's, it's my firm belief, my, my complete conviction and faith, that that's all you need is three big sheets of paper. And these millions of pages of documents and secret files and everything are unneeded. And I know we've got other things to cover, so I'm going to try to close this quickly. Yeah, yeah. And, and my point is that our, our founders knew that the people weren't the problem that people will generally do the right thing. They yeah. knew that the government was the problem. Indeed. And they put systems in place to protect the people from the government, and now those systems aren't working. Yes. The government is being held unaccountable, and we are still being held accountable. Yeah, and there's, we have a topic. We're going to skip down the page a bit. Uh, a cop who arrested a high school teenager on terrorism charges, you know, which is a, was a complete, shown to be a completely bogus arrest, mm -hmm. But now the cop is, has qualified immunity, but the taxpayers don't. Exactly. The, the taxpayers are going to end up having to pay this kid a bunch of, and his family a bunch of money yeah. while the, well, the cop gets to go off and continue his job, go mm -hmm. off, and he, has, he faces no consequences for violating somebody's constitutional rights. Mm -hmm. now, we could, yeah, we could go on and on and on about qualified immunity. Qualified immunity was made out of whole cloth by the Supreme, Supreme Court, Court, just yes. pulled out of thin air what, like 40 years ago? It I don't was know about exactly. that. Something like that. Yeah, something, something like that. that. Yes. And, and all of a sudden now, in order to prosecute somebody who works for the government, especially a cop, you have to find a court case that, is, that, that says that another cop somewhere arrested another kid on a, a completely bogus terrorism charge under the same circumstances and was convicted of wrongdoing in order to that, that's crazy. That's like, you know, it's like saying, no, oh, cops can shoot anybody they want as long as they do it left-handed. <laughs> <laughs> if you do it right-handed, oh, there's, there's, there's a case on the books where a cop shot a guy <laughs> in the back right-handed, yeah. so you can't do that. So all the cops will be down at the range practicing left-handed <laughs> shooting. I mean, it's just insane. It's insane. And the sad thing about this particular case, it was a little joke. Yes, it was, it was, it was just a joke. The teacher was, was in on it. The kid wasn't even one that the one that published the uh, the thing online. The the teacher was in on it, and and the uh, 
And the circumstances are, of it are actually pretty cool. They were having a discussion, and nobody got upset about it. And it, the school, uh, the demographics of the school, where the, the teacher was talking about uh, a, a, uh, uh, a school shooter, as generally, they're, they're young white men. And he was the only young white man in the class. <laughs> and so they said, school shooter. And he said, I'm a school shooter. And everybody was in on it. Yes. And the freaking cop knew that before he arrested him and still locked him up. Yeah. And he spent the night in jail. Right. And nothing's going to happen to this cop. Imagine that. Imagine I that. think the cop should get to spend some time in prison. Yes, no doubt about See how that. he gets along with his roommates. With his, with his buddies in there. Yeah, with his well, buddies. that's the thing. These these. The government can do that to you just mm -hmm. because they want to. But you can't. You try to do that to somebody. You try to lock somebody in a cage overnight to show it, to prove them some goofy yeah, lesson and see what happens. And, uh, yeah. it's, and the fact that we're living by such different rules yeah. is really the, the, ex, the symptom of a, of a much deeper problem that we're going to have to examine at the, at the later date. But today, we're going to examine private sector unions. A report has come out that private sector. Well, there are some. Yes, there are. <laughs> there are still a few private sector unions less, but it's it's less than seven percent of the private sector um, economy is now covered in unions. Six point one. Six point one. See, I was I knew it was less than seven, John. Yeah. I wasn't going <laughs> to. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was trying to be kind, John. I'm trying to be kind. kind. Yeah, You're yeah. trying to give credit where credit is not due. Is not due. <laughs> yeah, I'm going. just trying so to be what, kind. What percentage of? I, I should have looked this up before the show. What percentage of? Uh, of public sector employees or union employees. It's almost, it's almost 40 percent, I think. How much? It's almost 40 percent, I believe. I think, probably, yeah. Well, that it probably good. depends what state you're in, right? Yes. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so California, like California is where almost yeah, everybody is. is. Yeah, yeah. 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 Remember, yeah. we remember yeah. what the, 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 I think he's the start of the evil, or at least he's the flat standard bearer of the evil. Franklin Delano Roosevelt yes. said about public employee unions. Yeah. yeah. He, he, he said that they, they were, they were, horribly wrong and I think he said they were evil. He said because, there can be because no they can good change. outcome. Yes, because they can change the actions of the sovereign is what he said. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Well yeah. and we want to talk the question becomes why are private sector unions drop are losing their members, but it's actually kind of obvious. If you are deliberately disenfranchising half your potential base, half your yeah. worker base, they're not gonna go to you. And with the unions so heavily re invested in Democrats if you're a libertarian or independent or a Republican, you're not going to support a union, even if you might theory theoretically help you in your job situation. Mm. Right? You're like, I'm not opposed to unions, mm. but I wouldn't join a union that's heavily invested in one political party or the other. I wouldn't want to join it. Correct. Because, yeah. Because the point of the union is to have my work, not in my politics. Yeah. And the, 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 the thing about public, and, and we're talking about private sector, but public employee unions, I believe, supported Democrats to the tune of $1.8 billion in the they last did. election. They did. One public employee uh, organization that, that teachers union that is actually government sponsored, 97% of its political donations went to the Democratic Party. I mean, how can anybody, as you said, who's a libertarian, uh, independent, middle of the road, anything but a left wing radical, um, support unions? And in, in the, in the, private in the workplace and the, the in in the private sector what you want because you're working in the, in the private sector is you want to be paid for your work and what unions do is they pay people for seniority and for giving them plenty of political donations so they can carve out more power but what you want to do if you're in choose to work in the private sector is you want to negotiate as an individual so that that the harder you work the more you get paid and if, and and that's not going to be done. So there's there's no um, even though the current administration, I, I don't want to call it the Biden administration because I don't think he's in charge of his own bowel movements, much less the administration. <laughs> oh um, and that sounds very cruel. And I I'm sorry. He's I was talking about bladder, not bell. Um, so. <laughs> He has supported unions, uh, put in specious uh, regulations and rules, and tried to pass legislation that support unions, and, and union membership is still dropping. Yes. People don't want to take their money and give it to somebody to support things they, they don't believe in, and it's certainly not going to help you negotiate. Because if I'm working somewhere, 
I don't want to be paid the same as the other guy. I want to be paid based upon my work. Yes, and abilities. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and we see this in Amazon. There was an Amazon union victory, right? Yeah, a victory. Yes. Mm. But it was only 32% of the employees yeah. affirmed wanting a union. Yes. And unions and Amazon's taken them to court because that they believe firmly that the union was guilty of all sorts of skullduggery in the election. And yeah. we would be shocked by a union being yes. part of skullduggery. Of course we would be shocked. Yeah. Well, yeah. The, there's so much money in, at stake in one way or the other. Of course there's skullduggery in these kind of things, regardless of whether it's the union or the business. Because mm. you're, you're talking about a business having part of their... The way they operate taken away from mm -hmm. them, the, the ability Very to choose point. how they operate Very taken point. away from yeah. them. And then you've got this union who wants, you know, part of everybody's paycheck. Exactly. <laughs> and, and, you know, talking about this part of every, everybody's paycheck, you know, I have a personal story here. I, I hope I, I won't go too long. But for 20 and a half years, when I was working for the state of California, I'm, I'm now retired. I paid money to a, a union. The state of California was taking money from my paycheck and giving it to a private organization, which was the, one of the unions, which I was required to pay money to. Not is that it was my choice. I was required to do so for 20 and a half years until the Janus decision came down in, um, in two, uh, 2018, and that's when it stopped. But public employee unions have a special problem. They support the Democrats. They help them get, them, to help them get elected. And after they get elected, then these same unions are going to negotiate it with these people to get these big fat contracts for, for, um, for, for the employees. That, that is a corruption beyond a corruption. Even though I probably have personally benefited from that, I would have to say, but it is still mm -hmm. very corrupted, the way the public employee unions operate. And that is why Franklin Delano was, uh, was right. He, he don't think that these people should exist. And I don't think public employee unions should really exist. Mm. Now, the private unions, if people want to organize, that is their choice. I have no problem with that. But I do not like the special dispensation that the government have been granting these, um, these private unions, you know, making it almost like employees have to be intimidated to join the union and those sort of things. I, I, don't, I don't want those things. Mm. But if people wish to organize, that's their choice. Mm. I would have no problem with mm. that. Yeah, free association. Free association is free association. And there association. are some, there are some uh, organizations where there's, let me give you two examples. Boeing is very heavily unionized. And every five years they go on strike and they shut down the assembly lines. It's like a tradition. And, um, you know, it's uh, the management and labor are like this. And I trained a, a room full of uh, Boeing employees. And, and you could feel the tension in the room. The management folks and non-union folks sat over here, and the union people sat over here. And it was like I expected them to pull knives out. I almost wanted them to go through a metal detector before the thing. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's just that's their tradition. And, and Boeing still um, is a pretty efficient organization. They've had some problems with some airplanes lately. You know, they go like this when they're supposed to go like that. <laughs> yeah. But um, until very recently, Boeing planes just did not fall out of the sky. Now, on the other hand, the most efficient operator of airlines in the United States is Southwest Airlines. And they are, they are the most heavily unionized airlines. But the union and management at Southwest works like this right. because they realize they're in it together. So it can be done and it can work. And if it's a voluntary thing, I have no problem with it. But exactly. I agree with you, Leon. Um, government union should be illegal. Yeah, the, yes, the, I think so. Yeah, yeah, the danger, because it creates a self-feeding loop, right? Because yes. the unions feed the, the, the politicians who will give them more union jobs, who they get more money for the unions, which gets more money for the politicians, mm -hmm. which, and it just creates a self-fulfilling loop, mm -hmm. which is why we should not be celebrating, or at least one of the reasons why we shouldn't be celebrating the TSA having 47,000 employees. Not only is that just an insanely waste of time doing nothing at the airport, <laughs> let's be honest. <laughs> they can't well, even I, catch themselves catching, committing crimes, let alone us. So <laughs> it's I, I've got some things to say about that. But Leon, that. do you want to no, go, go ahead. first? Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm, I'm All right, trying. so um, I don't know whether TSA itself or another organization uh, did some simulations and on uh, smuggling weapons aboard aircraft. And the people that did the simulations, um, thank God they weren't real weapons or real terrorists, were successful. Anybody want to guess the number, the percentage of time? Uh, I, I, I think I know this story. Um, it was like 
two thirds of the time they got through? I Seventy percent of the time. Yes, yeah, Seventy percent. Yeah, it's yeah. probably two thirds. Yeah. I uh, yeah, well, yeah. two thirds would be slightly less. So it's seventy yeah. percent. And and so uh, if the people who are doing these things, it, they give, and we've talked about this over and over again. I know I've ranted about it. It gives the illusion of safety exactly. without the reality of safety. And the illusion of safety is even worse because then people who would normally be pretty careful because they're thinking, you know, I really don't want this airplane to go into like a Golden Gate Bridge or <laughs> a tower somewhere. I'm going to keep my eye on and keep sharp. But they see these people patting them down and grabbing them on their, you know, and, and searching them and putting them through metal detectors. They oh, I don't need to worry. I can just go to sleep. No, au contraire. Do not go to sleep because 70% of the time, the people that tested them got weapons through. Yes. Now, the cool thing is, is that the, there, there are some, some, some beings employed by TSA that are extremely successful at catching weaponry and explosives and all the rest of that. They are, however, not unionized because they're not human beings. They're German shepherds. Yes. So yes. Uh, <laughs> I, I think they should join a union. You know? <laughs> I think they should have their own union, a little German shepherd union. It's, it's ridiculous. It's a joke. I said right after all this stuff started, after 9-11, that, that uh, you know, a monkey could figure out a way to get something past those guys and gals. And there's, no, there's no doubt about that. And I think somebody did a study. There, there are several airports in the United States where they use private um, private security in terms of people going through the lines and boarding airplanes. And they are much more efficient and much more effective at catching some of those same weapons that you were talking about, John. And they were and the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the airports where they are private uh, security instead of the TSA, they do a hell of a lot better job. So most of what the TSA does, most of it, uh, probably 95% of it, could be done in the private sector. Or not no done problem. at all. On, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. On that, on yeah. That. Yeah. I mean, the sure. technology, if you look at what they do in foreign countries that, that have had to deal with, like, uh, you know, Israeli, you know, airports, which I've never been in, but I've read a lot about, yeah. they take all luggage up to satellite, or not satellite, up to flight altitude to make sure there aren't any compression triggers in bags. They have a great... Uh, mechanical explosive sniffers they have dogs yes. they have people who in the crowds and they're probably less conspicuous from what i've seen than ours but they actually know how to do the job same thing in britain i mean 10 years ago but before 9 11 i had a bag wiped down uh going to uh england because that's where my my in-laws are from and they they wiped the thing down and they put it in this little reader and then they passed me on through Right. You know, and this was like 20 years ago. Right, so right. we are, we're wasting money and giving the illusion of safety when, when, when the safety does not exist. Well, it's security theater, and we've seen over the last two years, or well, last 20 years, but two years specifically, how much we love security theater. We love to feel safe. Yeah. Whether we're actually safe or not is mm. irrelevant. We yeah. have this desire to feel safe. Yeah. And, you know, it's just mm. not. Your TSA you can have doesn't safe, make it. you can have free. You can't have both. Yes. Yes. Uh, exactly. That's I choose exactly. free. I that's, choose for myself, yes. That's actually a good one, John. Um, to, to switch here, California's math framework, I'm not sure how that actually segues, but we're going to segue no, it does. anyway. It does. In California's <laughs> math framework. <laughs> it does. It does. Yes. Has, has no sound evidence. The new math framework that California is using, well, the California math, you know, not, it's, not, it's worse than common core math now. It's California math. Mm. <laughs> it's, they have, there's no, no scientific evidence to show Cuff that it works. Cough yeah. Cough yeah. Cough yeah. Yeah. Cough yeah. Cough yeah. 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 Mm. It's nothing but a bunch of garbage, mm. okay? I am not joking. It's a bunch of garbage. Uh, you know, as you said, James, I have taught math to people from, I don't know if it's from all over the world, but I have touched many countries throughout the world, Three. including my own, Four. where I'm from originally. And I have never had a teacher or another student or anybody who have told me or uh, seem to have benefited from just sitting around there and struggling with a math problem explicit instruction works it works well this is what how i was educated and how all the students i have taught have been educated they have to have explicit instruction 
They have to have homework given to them so that they can have better retention. They can work through problems after they have been, after they have been given the instruction. But you see the nonsense that is going on is all because of the teachers' unions and all because of all these woke garbage that is going on in our schools. We have to get school choice. The zip code tyranny that is condemning mostly black and brown kids to these horrible schools that we have must end. We need school choice and we need it now so that parents can choose where their kids go to school so they can get a proper education. Reading, writing, and arithmetic is not being taught in our schools right now. All they are taught in this social justice garbage that is getting us nowhere. Now, that was my rant. Mm. <laughs> I'll, I'll add to the rant. There, actually, I want to differ with you in, in, in one area. This, this struggle and discussion and all the rest of that works for elite students, people who already well, have... So people who already have the foundation and the basics and are striving and self-directed and intelligent and all the rest of that. So it, it very well could work in a St. Francis High School here in town or, or a Jesuit or Sacramento Country Day or, or make it maybe a, a Rio Americano. Um, but it does not work for the people who need it most, uh, black kids, brown kids. Um, we, we can't say yellow anymore. And besides that, Asian kids, because they go home at night and are drilled on rote to the, so they memorize stuff and their parents sit there, their extended family with a mother and a father and a grandmother and a grandfather in the family having an interest in the child's educational development, they do astonishingly well in school. So the, 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 the people that suffer most from this craziness are um, people of color, and 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 that will continue until, as Leon said, we 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 take. Um, I'm going to find the quote. It's on my phone. I should have the quote in front of me. It's from um, Isabel Paterson, one of the founders of libertarian thought, and it's something I should have it memorized by now. Uh, one of the, one of the most egregious things that happens is when the the government takes children from their homes and puts them in a government sp uh, school and teaches them what the government wants and and extorts the money from the parents to pay for this procedure. Yes. And until we allow the, the parents, as you pointed it out, to make a decision as to where their kids go to school, and, and uh, about 80% of black and brown families in this country want that freedom. Yes. But their democratic um, elected officials don't. Yeah, well, we have the freedom to be running out of time. So I want to say, you know, each children needs to have their own way of learning. And we've solved that, by, as Leon points out, by school choice. So parents and children can find the environment that's suit, best suited for them. Thank you for your time. Thank you, gentlemen, for being here tonight. Thank you for watching. Please join us next week. And please remember to love everybody. Thank you very much, James. Thanks. It was quite Thanks enjoyable. Leon, yes. I remember I thoroughly enjoyed being on the show with you. I saw that. Uh, so and uh, when, when we were on uh, remotely. Yes. Yeah. yes. And you're also pleasant face-to-face, -to -face too, so that's <laughs> good. Thank you. <laughs>